analytics are crucial for your app survival in the real world. And just having the data is not enough nowadays. You need to interpret this data to determine user behavior, engagement, and other important metrics. In today's video, I'll introduce Vexo, my favorite tool for adding analytics and explore some cool features to help you track your app effectively. Let's dive in. Alrighty guys, so for this video, I want to integrate analytics on this app that I built myself. It's a linear clone um, showcasing how to build local first applications. Um, by the way, if you're interested in this app, I'll leave the link in the description. It's open sourced. Uh, but yeah, so let's start integrating Vexo. Um, Vexo, by the way, if you're not familiar, they provide analytics, really cool UI, best developer experience when integrating analytics. And this is how the landing page looks, as you can see, beautiful. And I want to focus this video on the new feature called Session Replace, which is really cool. We're going to check it out in a moment. But the first thing that you need to do is go ahead and sign in. By the way, you can start using uh, Vexo for free. They have a pretty good free tier. And if you decide to upgrade, you can use my code BETO10 to get a 10% discount. So there you go. Cool. So this is my dashboard. Let's go ahead and add a new application here on the left. This is going to be called linear light on the left we have these settings and inside the settings we have this app key so let's go ahead and copy this app key we're going to need it in a moment and now let's click on the vexo analytics on the left this is going to take us to the home page and then from here we can click the documentation and it, you're going to notice that this is very easy to integrate it's compatible with plain react native um, and also with expo the only prerequisite for your application is that you have to be using React Navigation or Expo Router. Um, in my case, I'm using Expo Router, so there's no issues. And I think any application comes with React Navigation or Expo Router nowadays. Uh, so yeah, the first thing that we need to do is install Vexo. So let's go ahead and copy this uh, Vexo analytics. Let's go to the project and I'll stop the server and say bun. I'm using bun, by the way install Vexo analytics and let's just confirm that Vexo is going to appear in our package JSON after it's installed as you can see here cool now because Vexo analytics uses uh, actually native code we need to rebuild the application so let's go ahead and say npx expo rebuild uh, I'll say platform iOS clean so clean is going to make sure that we are not uh, we are basically recreating everything from scratch. So I'll just go ahead and say yes, continue with these changes. Okay, so now that's ready. Let's go ahead and go to the main layout of the application. And at the top, I will import um, after all my imports. I'll import from Vexo Analytics and we can import Vexo like this. Okay, so the next thing that I need to do is just call Vexo and then we need to pass it api key that i copied before so i'll just paste my api key and hit save now in order to for this to take effect we need to rebuild the application so i run npx expo run ios and just like that we are tracking analytics so that's what i like about vexo that makes it very easy and quick to get started so let's start moving around on the app i'll just go to the inbox and then we can go to the new issue uh, search settings Maybe we can navigate to a specific issue and just start using the application. Okay, so let's go back to uh, Vexo. And as you can see, we have one online user uh, and the session time downloads everything, all that I need. It's here with a beautiful UI, by the way. It's also telling me that the device, it's an iOS device uh, from the United States and the popular screens, which is the inbox and new issue. But you can also track custom events if you want. And by the way, I also have another video in this channel explaining how to track custom events and how to handle more advanced things. So this is what we get without doing anything. But on the left, we also have more things like, for example, people. And in this case, we have one user, which is me, and we are using this on iPhone 16 Pro. So it's going to give you a bunch of information. You can click here to get more details like session events. And this is one of the latest features of Vexo. That's another thing. They are continuously improving this product uh, without changing the price, which is an amazing thing. And we don't have to make any code changes. So if you already had Vexo in your application, you can enjoy the session events. So in this case, you can see that the first thing that I did was open the application, tap on the screen one time, navigate to the inbox, 
and then tap on the screen, navigate on to the tabs. Then I went to the new issue and I can keep scrolling down. Okay. So let's go ahead and close this. Another feature that I really like about Vexo is the heat maps. So heat maps is going to let you know where on the screen the user is typing. And as you can see here, so because I'm the only user right now, we don't have like a bunch of data. Uh, you can see that I typed on the new issue. And if I, you know, select these screens, you can see where on the screen I was typing. I think this is very useful. Uh, let's go to custom events. So we don't have any custom events yet. Let's go to the assist session replay. So after a moment, I'm able to see the replays. Um, and by the way, um, I was trying to generate some replays using a simulator and it wasn't working. So what I did is that I created a build and installed it on my iPhone. And after a moment, the replays came in. So another cool thing that I want to mention is that when I was um, creating the replays and all that, I also sent this application for a review to Apple. And I think it's a really cool thing that you can come here and track who is using the application. Because if I scroll down, you can see that someone from South Korea was using the application. And I can even see what they were doing and the screens that they were visiting. And I think this person is the one that is reviewing my application in the App Store because I don't have any other users. Uh, so yeah, I just wanted to say that I think it's really cool. Um, but yeah, anyways, let's go, let's go back to the session replays. The idea of session replay is that you can see like a screen recording of what the user is doing with your application. So for example, if I select the latest one, you can see that um, basically you can play this video and you can start going through each event. So for example, you can see I opened the application, went to the new issue screen and start typing hello Vexo. And then tap on screen to times. I was uh, writing a description, testing. And then from here, uh, I was trying to dismiss the keyboard. So I couldn't do it. So it took me like three taps there or four taps. And then I went to the home screen and navigate back to the to the hello Vexo issue. So I think this is really cool. So one more one more thing that I want to mention is that when you go to the settings, you can uh, enable some things about the session replays. So the blur session replay was enabled by default. And also you can send uh, replays only on Wi-Fi. This might be useful if you don't want to, if you don't want your application to be, um, you know, using too much data, you can do this, but it, still you shouldn't be worrying about your application using a lot of data since these replays are very low quality. And I'm pretty sure most of the devices nowadays can handle them. Um, but just to show you how it looks when you have the blur active, um, here's a video. So basically it's the same thing, but it has a blur. I think this is good for privacy as well. If you have a team that maybe is tracking what the users are doing and you don't want them to see what's going on, you can enable the setting and the video is going to be blur. And still you can see what, what they are doing, right? So for example, in this case, I was scrolling on the home screen I uh, was watching some issues and then I selected one, went to the details screen and then went back. And that's basically it. So another cool thing that you can do is just come here and select the event that you want to track in specific. This is great for catching bugs as well. The video is like setting um, the progress of the video exactly where this event happened. All right. And this is basically what I wanted to show you guys. Session replay. It's a really nice feature of Vexo. And make sure to check out my other videos. I'll leave the link in the description if you want to learn more about custom events or asking for permissions to track the user and things like that. I'll leave the link in the description. That brings us to the end of this video, guys. I hope you found this overview of Bexo and its features helpful for tracking and understanding your app performance. If you have any questions or want to share your favorite analytics tool, feel free to leave in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on future tips and tutorials. See you in the next video.